Well, welcome back everyone. It's been a while since I've did a video. Figured I'd jump on here today, show you guys how to make a wind on leader. That don't suck. Do it yourself at home. It'll be better than the ones you're going to buy in the store. Hence, better than bought. And if you don't want to make it yourself, hit me up. We'll hook you up. About half the price is what you're going to pay in the store for them. And in my opinion, they're 10 times better and you'll see why that is. I'll explain the differences as we make it. And what the wind on leader does is it eliminates the need for a leader man. Okay, the angler can reel the whole complete leader right onto the reel. It comes up through the guides of the pole real nice. You've got no big barrel swivels. You've got no connections like that. You know, no great big giant knots to deal with when you're dealing with this heavy mono. It's just a good way to, to do it. You guys may remember the old Chinese handcuffs. You stick your fingers in each side, and the harder you pulled, the tighter that would squeeze on your finger. And that's just how this leader system works. So let's jump into it, and I'll show you guys uh, the stuff we're going to need to make it, and the steps, step by step, how to get it done. And like I said, you'll, it'll be better than bought. They're going to be stronger and a lot better than what you're going to buy in the store. And what you're going to need is some good quality hollow core braid, monofilament, or fluorocarbon leader, whatever your preference is. We're going to go with a 250 pound mono today with a 250 pound tough line downrigger replacement line is what this is. It's a hollow core. It does great. It's super, super strong. And it works great for this application. Normally, you'd have a 130-pound Dacron onto your leader, which, in my opinion, is a weak, weak point. You know, if you're going to have a 250-pound mono, you're going to have 250-pound hollow core that it goes into. But we'll start off, we'll peel about 10 feet of this off, which for me, it's about one and three-quarter arm spans. Just roughly, you ain't going to be perfect. Stuff is tough. Go back and clean that up because that's a messy cut. Okay. So, if, items you need, you've got to have the correct size hollow core braid for the mono you're using. You don't want to go try sticking a 30 or 50 pound mono up inside a big heavy hollow core like this. You know, there's a system that you got to kind of stick with there and it's just as far as i know it's it's feel it's touch and go you got to figure it out but we've got our braid we've got our mono this is 25 feet i've pre-cut you're going to need a loop needle as you can say it's got a small loop in one end and then you're going to need a threading needle and this is hollow it lets the mono go up inside of it so we can bring it through the center of this braid Okay, and what we're going to do, we're going to grab our braid. I'm going to go about two and a half feet down. I'm going to take my loop needle. Okay, and we're going to bow this braid out a little bit. And try to zoom in here so you guys can see this better. And then we're going to insert this needle. heading the opposite direction from that two and a half feet we just pulled and you don't push the needle through the braid you push the braid onto the needle you don't want it to come out the side like that if it does just kind of start over keep it going right down the center of that braid once you get it started on it'll go good for you Start it on there. Go easy at first. Okay, and once we're on a bit like this, I like to go down because then it don't have the tendency to push out the side on you near as much. You see guys go like this, it'll keep popping out. I like to go down like this and just keep pushing this up onto this needle. Okay, let it bunch up. Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Okay, you've got a fair amount there. So now what I'm going to do is come poke it out this side. Okay, we've poked it right out. We've got it bunched up on that needle. 
a good ways. We've poked it out the side. I'm gonna take this tag end, insert it into this loop. Okay, and now we're gonna pull this down inside of here to form our loop. It's called whipping a loop if you wanna be technical. Okay, and we need extra. We need a bunch to stick out here. So I'm gonna remove my new needle. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this tag and adjust my loop. I want like a two or three inch loop. Okay, that's a little big. Spin it up just a little bit. Okay, and that's about what I want right there. So now I'm gonna pinch it here, and I'm gonna pinch this line, and I'm gonna pull it back tight over the line that I just put in the middle of that. Okay, and you can see our tags hanging out here. We've come right back out the side of that braid, and already, okay, already I can put my hand in that and let that tag hang, and I can pull that just as hard as you can. But it's not good enough. We've got to put a couple locks on this now. So what we do is come back to the needle. Okay, and you want to go about an eighth inch down, an eighth to a quarter down from where you come out. You know, on the same side. Make sure you're not going in back here so this line is looping around. Right on that same face. Bunch it up. Okay, we'll go about a good eighth inch, three sixteenths. Get that needle back in this braid. Once more. Okay. Same deal. Bunch it on there. And this time I'm going to go down. Let's say that much. Okay. I'm going to come back out. Tag end goes back in again. Now, most of your store-bought leaders will, will do this one time, if that. Some of them don't even come out and put a lock on like this. They just go ahead and stick the tag end inside once and call it a day. Now, be careful, because see how this is looped around? If I just yanked that, I'm going to create a little knot there. So, make sure you twist that. Pull that back inside like this. And again, tighten it up. Okay, go back to your loop. Pinch it. Slide your fingers, pulling all that down. And if you look right there, you can see where we come out and went back in. Okay, and now we're going to do that again down here. Okay, I'm going to come to right about there, and I'm going to put a bend where I want to come out, just so I know and I don't go too far with my needle. So again, same side, so we're not wrapping around. 3 sixteenths, eighth inch, quarter inch, whatever floats your boat. Down from where you come out. Get that needle to thread back into the center of your hollow core. Getting it started can be a little tough sometimes, but once it's on there, it's a piece of cake. And like I said, don't push the needle into the hollow core. Push the hollow core onto the needle. Okay, and you see my, I got my little bend here. That's where I know I got to stop. Or come back out, rather. So, tag end goes back in. I'm going to keep coming down. Okay, I'm going to come right out there. And again, we're pulling this down through. All the way. Pull my needle out. Okay, and you guys can see what we've done. We've come out and we've gone back in again. So come back up top, pinch your loop. Always start up here, that way you're getting all this worked out. Now watch our tag end here. Okay, that's going to disappear right back inside because I put that little cheater notch, you know, where we bent it. So I knew where to come out. And that's just so I'm not wasting any material. Some guys will have, you know, you can see I've got a little bit sticking out there. So what I've got to do is push this up and we'll come in. And what I was saying is some guys will have, you know, a couple six inches to a foot there. And I just don't like wasting that material. It's expensive. So there you have it. We ripped a, whipped a proper loop.
Okay, we've gone it back inside of the hollow core. We've popped out and jumped back in there. We've popped out, jumped back in there. And then we've stayed in. Okay, and that is a double lock. And that is not going nowhere. We'll come back and put a little glue here. And we'll serve the other end when it's time. I'll show you how to do all that. Now let's jump on to the mono end. Got to get your mono. Cut it to length. Okay, and as you can see here, on this end, I've taken and tapered that. I've cut the end at an angle. I've taken sandpaper and pulled it to get any burrs off. We're going to take the appropriate needle for the 250 pound test we're going to thread this right inside this hollow needle like so now we're going to go down to the opposite end that we just whipped the loop in as you can see here we're going to go right to this very end open this up i'm going to go ahead and get a clean cut there i can tell that's a mess done with scissors there we go Spray that end up a little bit and just kind of get in here and start picking it apart. Get it all opened up. And find the center of this. Hopefully I'm in the frame of that camera here for you guys. Okay, and we're just getting it started on. I'm going to try to zoom in for you. And again, you push the braid onto the needle we don't push the needle into the braid okay and for this we just keep going just keep piling it up there Oop, we don't want to poke out like that if you do just get it going again and keep going with it just keep bunching, keep pushing, keep bunching. And this is a big line. You know, this is about the maximum size mono that I could put up inside of this braid here. If you're going to go up to like a 400 pound mono, you've got to go to a, a Dacron or something bigger, you know, that can uh, accommodate the size of that line. But I'm just going to keep threading this right up through. I'm going to let it pass right over the end of my needle and start working right up this mono. Okay, and we're going to go all the way up till to where that loop come in. We're just going to keep feeding. Keep feeding, keep feeding, keep feeding. Every once in a while, take it and pull it. Let it slide up your mono. Come back and just keep on feeding. I kind of stop talking here for a minute just focus and get this done get on to the next part of this but when we do our uh, our finishing that's where it really gets important and you'll see how we step that up a knot here on the better than bot channel step it up a couple notches actually most guys will use the wax floss uh, to finish with. And we're not going to do that. We've got an unbreakable Kevlar. So when we do the serving on it to finish all this off so nothing slips when it comes through the guides, we're going to do that with a flexible adhesive and unbreakable Kevlar. Which really will just put this baby right over the top. Okay, but we're just continuing to thread this up. You can see we've gone a good way as the tip of my needle's here. We've gone ooh, quite a ways up that mono, which is probably enough. You know what I mean? But hey, this is better than bought. We can't have probably enough. We are not messing around. We hook onto that 800 pound sword or whatever. He's coming to the boat. 
We're not going to pull this in and find the uh, mono pulled out of the end of our wind on and want to sit there and smack yourself in the face a couple times because you hurried up and did, you know, a not so good job. Take your time. It's peace of mind. It's insurance is what it is. You want to go out there with liability or you want to go out there with full coverage and comprehensive glass breakage your whole nine yards. Better than bought. We want the whole package. Fish is going in the box. Okay, but just keep, remember, push right up on. Okay, I'm almost, this is I can feel. You, I don't know if you can see that, but it kind of necks down right there. That's where my tag end ends inside there. And if you leave a little section, I notice there's like a little weak spot. So I like to go right tight, bump this just about into that. And I say just about. Don't go bump it into it because it'll actually loosen everything up. I'll try to let you see here. That's where my tag end ends. That's where the tip of my needle is. So I want to come up within like a sixteenth of that. Okay? And we're going to stop. We're going to poke the needle out the side. Okay? We're going to drag that right out through. And now I can pull my needle off my mono. Just like that. Okay, still got a loop on this end. Okay, no knots. Remember, we whipped that loop in. We got two locks on it. And we've got this mono wound way through this. I mean, we have five feet here that we've wound that through. And now what I'll do is I'll just come down to this end... And I'm going to pull that mono so it comes back inside of there. Rather than cut it off. A lot of guys will just cut it. But like I said, i got to think about wasting materials. I'm not rich. And this stuff costs money. Why would I waste three inches of it? You know what I mean? When I can just take a second like that. And there you have it. She worked right back in. So now I'm going to push it back up where I want it. Which is right there okay and I'm gonna pinch it here okay we've got it right up just a tad bit from where our other one ended from our loop push straight up in there now I'm gonna pinch it right here and I'm gonna tighten this up same thing pinch it and start sliding the hollow core over that mono let it get tight go all the way down do that a few times okay and there we have it now I know I can grab this grab this mono and pull and that is not coming out that's locked in there like the Chinese finger handcuffs okay so it makes a real good system All right, let's get into finishing this off here which is called the serving. I'm kind of fortunate. I've tied flies most of my life, so I've got a... I use my fly tying vise, and I use the edge of a chair. I'll show you guys how I do this. I'm going to take my loop. I'm going to come over here. Throw it around my chair. And the idea is to position that chair so the part I need to work on is right over my mat. And that should do it right there for me. Yep. Okay. And now I'll take this mono over here stick it in that vise and gently clamp it you don't want to crush that mono just gently clamp it i'll pull you guys out and show you what i've got here so what i've done is i've taken the loop that we made and i've just put it around the edge of my chair okay and that's holding that for me and then it comes right across my table here where i'm going to be working right here it's over my mat and it holds in the fly vise okay real simple 
And what we're going to do to put the serving on this, we're going to use, it's a vinyl fabric and plastic flexible adhesive. We don't want this stiff. If we use super glue, it's going to have a big stiff section, you know, like a metal needle coming up through the guides. It ain't going to flow good. It ain't going to bend good. It's going to be weird. So we'll use that flexible adhesive. And we're going to use a Kevlar thread. Okay, and this stuff, you cannot break it. You wrap this around your hands and pull. It'll cut you right to the bone before it breaks. So be careful, you know, you don't want to... Don't go testing it at home to see if it'll break and cut yourself. Is what I'm getting at. But let's get this camera set up here, and I'll show you guys how we're going to get on and do the serving. Now I'm going to come way up on my braid, way up to where my mono starts. I'm going to pinch it with my fingers like we've done several times. And I'm going to pull it down that mono. Making sure that we've got all the slack out of that. And that it's pulled right down on there tight. Throw a few 12 packs of soda on my chair here. Add some weight. see that's still growing a little bit when I do that each time so I'm gonna come back again really get that tight okay let me get you guys situated here and we'll start the serving there all right now we're going to start this with what's called a nail knot sorry about that we're not professional photographers here we just like to make stuff so take a little bit of your glue i've got a paper plate here i'm just going to put a little dab of this in the corner of that plate it dries fairly quick so uh don't put too much there now what i'm gonna do take my loop needle lay it right over this we want to come about two inches down from the end of this braid i'm gonna pull a bunch out of the tag end here get this situated my line's all tangled up on my bobbin here Okay. And you kind of really should have a bobbin. If you don't have a bobbin, I mean, you can do it with just a spool of thread probably. But uh, the bobbin is really going to help wrap this good and tight, and I'll show you why. Okay. So what we're going to do is pull a good bit out of the tag here. We're going to lay this on here. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm about. I'm about an inch there. I want to be about two inches back. Okay, and we want the wraps heading towards our loop end. We'll go ahead and put that tag through that needle. And then I'm just going to pull that needle out. Pulling that tag right back through the loops we just made. Like so. Okay, we'll pull this braid back to get it all tight. Okay, and we'll cinch that down. And now what I'm going to do is just a half hitch with two wraps. One, two. And 
really pull it down. And that's what's good about the Kevlars. You don't have to worry. Like when you get to the end of this, when we're getting, when we wrap this down and then come back, if this was to break, we have to start over. So that's why the Kevlar is uh, my go-to for something like this. I ain't got to worry about it breaking. You know, I got to worry about cutting my fingers. Okay, so I've got that there. And now what I'm going to do, I'm gonna, just going to leave that tag end actually. I'm going to wrap it this way, get it out of my way. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and start this process. We're going to wind this up. Okay, and I'm going to make a couple wraps by hand. Like so. And it's important you don't let this get loose. Keep this tight throughout this process. And once I'm done here, I can pull this the other way towards my loop to really get everything set there. So it ain't a big deal. Don't stress it too much. Okay, but you guys can see we're all tied on here now. Okay. With our nail knot, we've secured it with a couple half hitches. I've wound the bobbin up tight to that. Okay. And now what we're actually going to do is we're going to whip this around and send it in the direction we want it to go. I'm going to move you guys back so I don't hit the camera here while I do this. Okay, but making sure my tag stays here. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to swing it. Okay, and I'm going to let that work all the way towards the end. Now I've got to stop it. See how it was pulling out of my bob in there? If yours does that, it's just not squeezing enough. Take your bobbin and come around the side like this one time. See how it come up on the arm right here? It's going to make it harder to spin out of there. Okay, so we'll come back up. You wrap this around again so it don't get in my way. We want that tag end to finish with. I'll show you why after. But you just keep whipping that. Keep this end slightly higher and it'll work its way right down. Okay. Go right off the end and keep it going. And go about an inch, inch and a half, even two inches right up to mono beyond that braid. Like so. And now, we're going to take a little bit of our adhesive, which has already started to thicken, so I've got to get some fresh stuff. Take a little bit of that, guys. And a lot of people are going to say, oh, that's overkill, you don't need all that glue. I know I don't need all that glue. This is insurance. This is, uh... This is the fish is coming to the boat insurance. I don't see any reason to skimp. You know, let it have it. Do a good job. You wouldn't go through all this extra work on the boat on the fly. You know, but we're at home. We're at the bench. Take your time. Do a good job. Okay, spread that glue all over that joker. Then we're going to wrap right over the top of all that glue. And we're going to finish it with glue. So, I mean, this is going to be real solid rig here. And like I said, I'm using a flexible adhesive that I've already tested on the Kevlar, on the mono, on the braid. And make sure there weren't going to be no reactions. It ain't going to disintegrate the braid or anything like that. Because you know how chemicals are sometimes. And I'll smooth that out with my fingers. It's messy, but oh well. I'll do a couple wraps by hand here. So they're real tight. I actually want these to bite right into that mono. And I mean, I am pulling on that. It's Kevlar. I don't have to worry about it breaking. Now I'm going to start going right back over it. Put a little glue on that part I just did. Okay. I'll start going back over itself now. Okay. 
wind this back up taut get a, get your tag out of the way again and now start whipping it back down that way okay and just keep whipping it once you get the hang of it I almost got my tag in there you guys saw that that would have stunk because it's all glued what I need is a little piece of tape up here, I think, next time to hold this for me. Come back. Let me just get this swinging again. Okay. Come on, baby. Cooperate. There we go. Okay. Once you get it going, you do a couple, you'll get the hang of it. And I'm going to go a little beyond where we stopped before. Okay, now that's looking pretty good right there. We still got our tag in, remember. So now what I'm going to do, we'll pull a little bit off before we cut this. Half inch. Pull it tight. Go around the back. Half hitch to the left. This is just trying not to get these knots stacked on top of one another here is why I did that. And again, if I was to break that right now, I got to start over. I got to completely start over. Okay, but this is a nice connection right here. Okay, and it gets thin, and it progressively gets thicker as it goes. So as that comes through the guide, it's just beautiful. We've got this end tapered down. We're finishing that off. Okay, we've got our half hitch in there locked. We'll go ahead and do one more double pass half. And that's just taking the tag end around the main line once. Around the main line twice. Cinch him down. Okay, we'll go ahead and cut our Kevlar free. Set our bobbin aside. Grab a little drink real quick. And this is called the serving. And now we're just going to come through and we're going to finish this off with a series of knots. left one right now I'm going under those knots are on the top there one down there okay I'm gonna go ahead and do a double Now both lines together, right around the main line, and we're going to do a double here, and this will be a final knot. There, we got it, we got it. Draw that back in. Right. That's looking good. Take one more up on the top. Just to lay everything in good. I'll do one left hand and double. Spin it. I'm going to call it a day right there. Go ahead and cut off your tags. You can cut them right up close. Come in. I'll actually even take these hemostats. They're kind of flat. 
and I want to compact these knots down into my braid before we glue it. And this just makes a smoother transition. You know, you don't have to do this. Again, if this is something, you, this is a step you're not going to do if you're on the boat. You're not going to have time to mess with that. So now, a little more glue. Take a toothpick this time because we want to coat this. And really work it in, you know, back and forth, back and forth. Let it soak right into that. And go beyond. Go beyond your knot up into that braid. I go a good eighth quarter inch. Spin it as you do it so you're getting the glue all over all sides. At a certain point, when you notice the glue starting to harden, you just come in with your fingers and really smooth it out good before it uh, bunches up on you. Coming up onto the mono. Going past this end. Okay, twisting it, really keeping that even. Now, if you guys are wondering, geez, fabric adhesive, you know, well, that's the thread and the hollow core braid, you know, they're kind of fabrics, right? You know, some of this stuff might even be considered a plastic, but we've got vinyl, fabric, and plastic. It's good for skirts, you know, it's good for a lot of different stuff. But as you can see, we've got this glued up pretty good here. And we're going to do a, a finishing coat of glue as well. That's just our first set. You guys off we'll come in and have a look at this okay so this is our serving piece of cotton on this end I'll clean all that up after okay you can see we've got that wrapped and glued really good I've got you guys zoomed away in right now so just kind of bear with the thing freaking out okay and you can see them frays sticking up right here on this end just push these frays that's where you cut it off as the glue tacks up, I just push them down and squeeze them and it'll stick. And then the next coat of glue, okay, I'm kind of squeezing and rolling. You can see that laid them down nice. Once the glue is tacky, they'll, they'll take and stick good like that. See, now we're all set. And that's a nice, super smooth transition when you're reeling that up. What? It's coming along good. I'm going to go ahead and pause you guys here for a minute while this glue sets up. And I'll get my uh, little paintbrush and I'll show you how to do the finishing coat. And then we'll have a finished wind on leader made better than bought. You know your fish ain't getting away. We'll be right back. All right. This ain't tacky anymore. I've given that about 10 minutes. I'll throw down a little more glue. And what I've got is just a real small brush here. Kind of a flat, straight bristle. Come in and get some glue. We'll get some layered across this thing all the way the entire length. Okay, and then I'm going to spin it to get everything coated and make sure we're not missing any of this. Notice I'm brushing against the grain of the thread. You know, if I was to go this way and spin it, all the ridges of the thread will just stay there. Going this way, it's allowing that glue to fill in between each one of them ridges and just smoothing this out even more. Not that it's not smooth enough. I mean, that thing's going to come up through them guides so good. You wouldn't even feel or hear it. Coming out on that mono about a quarter inch, really making sure we get that end. And the upper end here. This is the end that takes all the brunt. 
as it comes across back onto the reel. So you want to get a nice coating up there. I'll usually even come back one more time and just hit this, this end right here. We're also going to hit the loop right in the crotch of the loop just so when it's in the packaging it doesn't want to uh, fall back on us. There we go. That's all glued up really good. And that's pretty much it for your wind on leader. We got to glue our loop. Once this is dry, we'll be able to do that, which I can just show you on one here. I don't want to undo this mm -hmm. one. You'll just take your loop right here in the crotch. Okay, right in this crotch where it goes back inside of itself. Just put a little dab of glue right here. Okay, and what that does is keeps this from going inside and changing the size of your loop. Because it can. If it snuck in there a little bit and you grabbed it and smoothed it down, you just, it'll mess up a little bit on you. Like I say, once you're pulling, okay, that comes down to here. Once you're pulling, the harder you pull, the tighter that squeezes. So it ain't coming out on a dead straight pull. When things get slack and wobble around, if it's not served properly or your loop ain't proper, that's when stuff can happen. So you want to make sure you're doing all this tight, real, real tight. And you won't have to worry about no trouble. Very, very good system. But in the next videos, we'll be doing some videos on how to make these stiff rig double hooks. Stiff rig meaning it's stiff rigged. This hook just don't flop around. Okay, we do them in black, red. I'm going to show you guys how to do them. And we're going to have a video on some 12-inch squids coming up that have the... Uh, double hook sets in them these are all on cable for your toothy quitters wahoo barracuda stuff like that trolling the reef and these are for weedy days you know these are weedless squid rigs they're just big ones yeah, we'll get into some of that stuff but i appreciate everyone for uh stopping by checking out the video i know it's a long drawn out video but i wanted you guys to see and understand the process to do this correctly don't just whip your loop and go back inside and call it a day. Come in, go out, go in, come out, go in two or three times. That's creating locks. The harder you pull, the tighter that is locking that in. It's just better. You know, take your time. Do it right. Appreciate it, guys.